Hi everybody, good Saturday afternoon and welcome inside Hobson Fieldhouse in Missouri City, Texas. This is VibeFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend County Sports and we are here today to decide who is going to the Region 3 Class 6A semifinal in boys basketball. The Elkins Knights, basically the host team on what amounts to their home floor, taking on the Heights Bulldogs out of Houston ISD. I'm Roger Smith, glad you're with us. This VibeFortBend.com presentation of UIL basketball playoffs is brought to you by Xfinity. With the X1 Sports app, get up to the minute scores, stats, and standings right on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the winter. First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. And all four of them are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. And we also want to thank Office Depot in Sugarland for their sweet assist this year. Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, helps our team at VibeFortBend.com take care of business every day. As we bring you Fort Bend County Sports every week. Well, we're going to have a double header today. It's the 3 o'clock game right here, Elkins against Heights, and then at 5 o'clock we will have the Ridge Point boys taking on Cy Creek. They will also be trying to go to a Region 3-6A semifinal, but the good news is if Elkins and Ridge Point both win today, they don't have to play each other. In fact, they could possibly meet in the Region 3 final, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Very, very, very big games being played today. We will step aside after this word from the University Interscholastic League and our great sponsors and get this one underway for you from Hobson Fieldhouse, Elkins against Heights. We'll be right back. There are no words to describe it. The isolation. The boredom. The loneliness. If you're wondering where your teenage son or daughter's spirit went, you're hardly alone. The past year has been devastating, especially for them. But here's the good news. They might just find it again, playing high school sports. Workouts that stimulate, teammates and coaches that care, the sense of belonging so many of us have been missing lately. That's what school sports are all about. The sense of achievement is real, and the camaraderie is hard to beat. Coping with uncertainty is difficult, but school sports can help the teenagers in your family start feeling like themselves again. Encourage them to give it a try. High school sports, it's so much more than a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the african-american film critics association it's a place where you can go to learn to laugh to educate and uplift to launch your new experience just say black experience into your xfinity voice remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in black entertainment anytime the black experience channel is the new place to experience our stories only on xfinity restrictions apply not available in all areas requires xfinity tv the x1 First Tire and Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bite Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. 
Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Don't miss the UIL Basketball State Championship Games for the Boys on March 13th in San Antonio. For more information, visit UILTexas.org. The starting lineups, starting with the visiting Heights Bulldogs. Number zero, Kendrick Rhymes, 6'1", senior guard. Number two, correction, not number two, number five, Keondrick Douglas, 5'10", senior guard. Number 15, Sir Roberts. Stand 6'2", he is a senior forward. Chris Smith, number 10, 6'3", senior guard. And Jaden Briscoe, 6'3", senior guard. And for your Elkins Knights, sophomore guard Chris Johnson, stand 6'3", Shane Bell, the 6'1", senior guard. Jacoby Harris, 5'11", senior guard. Ryan Jones stands 6'2", he is a senior and plays forward. And Josh Fanuel, is listed as a guard, but he's basically a power forward for these Elkins Knights. He stands 6'3", and he's one of the great seniors on this Knights team. The Knights wearing the home white uniforms with the royal blue and Las Vegas gold trim. Heights in the dark gray uniforms, and Elkins will be going from left to right to start the game. Ryan Jones jumping center against Sir Roberts of Heights, and we are ready to rock from Hobson Fieldhouse. Good crowd on hand on a balmy late winter afternoon. Both teams of cheerleaders, including the magnificent costumed Knights mascot of the Elkins School. Albert Thomas, the head coach of the Knights, and Ralph Barreras, the head coach of the Heights Bulldogs. Barreras looking relaxed with his arms folded, bumping fists with the referee and waving at someone in the stands. So we are ready to go, eight minutes on the clock, first quarter, and this game is underway. Jones taps it to Faneuil, and he gives it back to Jacoby Harris, and Elkins has the ball to start the ball game. Jacoby Harris directing traffic, he's a senior leader. Chris Johnson has it, double teamed in the right corner, gives it back to Harris. Harris drives into the circle, kicks it back out to Bell, passes up the three, now gives it to Johnson. He's thinking about the three, but he backs up, guarded by Jaden Briscoe. Now he moves to the top of the key, gives it to Harris, drives into the paint, scoops it up. Looked like he was fouled, but the shot is missed, and here comes Heights with Keondrick Douglas, who rebounded it, pushing it up the floor. Now it's Jaden Briscoe over on the right sideline, exchanges the ball with Douglas, and now they bring it around the perimeter on the near side to Rhymes. Rhymes now to the top of the key to Douglas. There goes Briscoe. Good defense by the Knights, keeping them out of the interior, keeping them out of the paint. Douglas with a side-to-side -side dribble gets a pick, and Harris almost picked the ball off, but it bounced into the hands of Briscoe. Side-to-side -side dribble, free throw line, scoop up with the teardrop with the left hand, no good. Sir Roberts grabs the rebound, and Heights will go on offense again. Douglas now driving to the left block. Lost his balance, went down, and it's a held ball. He and Jacoby Harris, but the arrow is going to favor Heights because the Knights won the opening tap. Rhymes to throw the ball in underneath the basket at which Hyde is shooting in this first half. Throws the ball over everybody to Jaden Briscoe, who's near the midcourt circle, guarded by Chris Johnson. Stops near the free throw line, gives it back to Douglas. Here's Rhymes, who hands it to Briscoe, stops near the top of the key behind the back dribble. Now it's Harris guarding Douglas. He moves to the top of the key, and Faneuil switches over on him, and now a steal. Harris poked it away. Johnson had it ahead to Faneuil, and he is tackled near the baseline. And I think we're going to get a foul call. We'd better. No score on the board. We've played a minute and 40 seconds already, and Josh Faneuil will not go to the line. That was a foul on the floor. He was mugged before he had a chance to try to score. Harris from the baseline, looking, looking. Gets the ball in past Faneuil, but Johnson is there to pick it up. 
just before it crossed the sideline, wearing the hot pink shoes. Side to side dribble with Briscoe on him. Now Ryan Jones between the rings and they work the perimeter over to the near side. Shane Bell, now Harris, a 30-footer from the top of the key. It's no good, rebound rhymes for Heights. Still, no one has scored and we played two full minutes. There goes Briscoe trying to get around Johnson. Step back three on the way and it's good. Heights draws first blood. And they're pressing. Same thing that did Bush in earlier this week. They came here and eliminated Bush on Tuesday night. Underneath to Ryan Jones gets his shot blocked by Sir Roberts. Heights looking very enthused and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and all that. And now they're on offense again. And there is Douglas with a little floater and it rattles around no good. Back to Briscoe, launches the three way off to the left. And it's off the hands of Rhymes out of bounds. It will belong to the Knights. This may be one of those games where it's dangerous to be a photographer along the baselines or a cheerleader. Harris to Bell. They break the press easily. Johnson bounce pass to Fandrell, and that's two. Correction. He bounced past it to Ryan Jones. That's a sweet assist. We want to thank the team at Office Depot and Sugarland for their assist, helping us take care of business all year long to bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Three to two the score, Heights on top and the Bulldogs on offense. Douglas moves near the top of the key, sends it to Sir Roberts in the left corner, trying to get around Harris. Now back between the rings to Douglas, who is standing still with two hands on the basketball. Sir Roberts, bounce pass, and there goes Rhymes. And Shane Bell blocked the shot of Briscoe, but it's a putback try and good by Chris Smith. And the Knights do a great job keeping the ball up high and breaking the press. Chris Johnson puts it up short, and it's a one-and-done possession. Sir Roberts grabs the rebound. Heights leading 5-2, to two, has the ball with less than four and a half minutes to go in this first quarter. Briscoe picked up by Johnson at midcourt. Now gets it to Chris Smith, top of the key. He sends it over to Rhymes. And over to Sir Roberts on the left block, trying to back in on Faneuil. Can't do it. Back to Douglas, fakes a three. Moves over, shoots another three. No good. Rebound Shane Bell for the Knights. No full court press this time when they bring it up. And now Jacoby Harris, top of the key. No look pass inside. Ryan Jones. Backdoor layup is good. Under four minutes to go. We have a timeout. That hoop by the Knights draws them within five to four. We will step aside. You're listening to VipeFortBend.com. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV to the X1. Heights leading 5-4 to four and with the basketball. Jaden Briscoe dribbling in on Josh Faneuil, trying to get around him. Spin move, puts it up with the left hand. No good. Faneuil grabs the rebound for the Knights. Chris Johnson pushing it down the far sideline over to Faneuil. Faneuil looked like he was going to pull up for a three. Drove into the paint, put it up. Put it up strong. He was drawing a foul as the ball rattled off the rim. No good. He will get two free throws. The foul called on Chris Smith. Daniel had a big game earlier this week when the Knights won at Coleman Coliseum over Spring Branch Memorial. He missed the first free throw. Gets one more, an opportunity to tie up this game. 3.21 to go in the first quarter. Second free throw, good. Nothing but net. No press by the Knights. Briscoe bringing it up for Heights right in front of his head coach, Ralph Barreras. 
Bounce pass to Sir Roberts. Ryan Jones is right there on him. Jacoby Harris with a steal of a cross-court pass. There he goes. And a bounce pass. No look to Shane Bell. Shot missed. But Faneuil the follow. And it's good. The Knights have the lead for the first time. 7-5. Jaden Briscoe guarded by Johnson and waving Chris Smith to the top of the key. Now it's Rhymes guarded by Bell, moves to his right and a near steal by Johnson, couldn't quite bring it in. Now here comes Heights on offense and it's an offensive foul. Player control against Kendrick Rhymes. He had driven near the foul line and then passed off and as soon as he let the ball go, he ran over an Elkins defender, that being Shane Bell. Heights ready to press. It was their press that was so devastating. I noticed that the Knights are just not really dribbling. Not too much. Mostly just passing the ball. Deep corner three from the left. Chris Johnson, it rattles out, no good. Here comes Rhymes. Gives it back to Briscoe. Now Smith around the perimeter. Douglas inside the arc, puts it up short. And Faneuil grabs the rebound for the Knights. Three on two, there goes Johnson. Behind the back with the ball, and off the glass for two. It's a nine to five lead for the Knights. Now Chris Smith in the forecourt for Heights, trailing nine to five. And an entry pass as they get it into Colby Williams who has just entered the ball game. Now Douglas, a jumper from the left elbow is no good, but a strong rebound by Williams of Heights and his put back is good. That makes it nine to seven. Coy Glover in the game. So is Jackson Fields. And he throws a pass away. Stolen by Chris Smith. He ran out of room near the baseline. And expected to find a teammate somewhere. And he just wasn't there. Rhymes goes up strong. Misses one hard off the glass. And a bounce pass ahead from Harris to Johnson. And he slams it in with one hand to make it 11-7. Ralph Barreras is out on the court. And he wants to talk to his team and give them some tough love. We'll be back on VitefortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at FirstTireAuto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bite Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com Introducing the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger with the flair of spicy crispy chicken topped with fresh cool veggies and pickles. This flavor speaks for itself, so stop by your hometown Whataburger and try it today. We'll see what strategy Heights uses. They keep Colby Williams in the game. He was the first substitute, and they also have Gabriel Alvarez out there, the little brother of the great Grace Alvarez, whose three-pointers rained down last Saturday and eliminated the Ridgepoint girls from the playoffs. Briscoe driving in on Harris, and he gives the ball to Alvarez, who traveled. Made a little shuffle step to the right before he passed the ball or dribbled. No pressure now. Harris gets it to Faneuil in the forecourt, pulls up, shoots the three, long and no good. Rebound Alvarez, hands to Briscoe. Now there's pressure by the Knights. Shane Bell tried to get Briscoe to turn it over. He almost did near the sideline, but he gets into the forecourt. Sir Roberts now has it, holds the ball over his head, trying to throw it over Faneuil, but it's a bounce pass to Williams, who throws it away looking for Alvarez near the far sideline. Williams thought he was going to be leaning into a defender, and he just kind of leaned into thin air. Lost his balance and threw it away. 37 seconds to go in the first quarter. Knights on top, 11 to seven. Four is their biggest lead. They've had that four point lead twice. Jackson Fields now gives it to Shane Bell between the rings. Dribbles the ball, gives it to Faneuil near the sideline. Guarded by Sir Roberts, looking inside. Bounce pass, there's Bell. Jump stop, move inside, and hits from two feet. 18 seconds to go. They stopped the clock because the ball had 
rolled away from the baseline. Now they will start it when they get it in bounds, and Briscoe almost lost it right there with no defender anywhere near him. 12 seconds on the clock. He's taken his sweet time getting across the midcourt stripe. Now he does. Six seconds to go. Briscoe moving in on Harris. Left block puts it up with the left hand. It's no good. Rebound Knights, and the first quarter ends with the Knights on top by six, 13 to seven. You're listening to VikeFortBend.com. GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. Thanks to an 11-2 run to close out the first quarter, the Knights have the lead, 13-7, in this Region 3-6A semifinal game. Ryan Jones in the game, so is Coy Glover. He gives it back to Johnson, who tries to back in, and now shoots the two-pointer, and it's good. Nothing but net right over Sir Roberts. 15-7 our score. Here comes Heights. Sir Roberts, top of the key, guarded by Jones. Now, it's a jump stop move. Looked like a travel by Keondrick Douglas, but he went up strong after that jump stop and drew the foul. And they call it on Ryan Jones. So many of the players who play a large measure of the minutes for the Knights are going to be gone when this 2020-2021 season is over as Douglas hits the first free throw to make it 15-8. So you've got Bell, Harris, Jordan Robertson, who may see some meaningful minutes today, Lucian Paul, Coy Glover, Ryan Jones, all seniors. So is Josh Faneuil, probably the heart and soul of this team. The second free throw was good, and then Heights with a steal in the backcourt. Briscoe sends it to Alvarez. Bounce pass, gets it back inside, lost the handle. There is no handle, but he did almost lose the ball. Got it to Douglas, though. Sends it to Briscoe on the left perimeter, left wing, about 30 feet from the basket. Johnson on him. Now he throws it over on the right side. Sir Roberts trying to put a move on Glover, kicks it back out to Alvarez. Does not catch it clean, but he maintains control. Douglas top of the key, Shane Bell staring him down. He drives past the free throw line, puts it up short, no good, and Bell gets the rebound. Here come the Knights leading 15 to nine. Chris Johnson slows down, speeds up, goes into the paint, puts it up, double clutch move, in and out, no good. He got his rebound, no good on the putback try, then Shane Bell throws it back out to Johnson. Now it's a no look pass to Bell and an easy two. That's a sweet assist. We want to thank the team at Office Depot in Sugarland for their assist. Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, helping our team at VibeFortBend.com take care of business every day as we bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Jaden Briscoe, double team, and he was grabbed on the wrist. I think they're going to accuse Jackson Fields of the foul. Fields and Glover both take a seat. I think the foul was, according to the scoreboard, it was actually on Chris Johnson. And he is still in the game. Smith throws the ball inbounds for Heights to Jaden Briscoe. 17 to nine game. Knights on top. Six minutes left in the first half. 
Sir Roberts drives in strong. His layup is too hard. And the rebound to Chris Johnson. Roberts tried to poke it away. But he gets out of there into the forecourt. Fangle almost gets a layup. He goes down hard. So does a defender, Chris Smith. Those two are down on the floor. It's four on four. Sir Roberts and his layup is blocked. But Ryan Jones has his legs cut out from under him as he's slapping the ball off the backboard. And I don't know if that's a goaltend or a foul. But everybody's up and okay despite the hard fall. It was an offensive foul or the ball going out of the bounds, one or the other. Now into the forecourt, Chris Johnson, three-pointer way long. Jacoby Harris, oh, what a save, but he saved it to Briscoe. And Jacoby almost went out the door at the south end, but he's back on the court now. Here is Heights on offense, running out of room near the baseline was Chris Smith, and a foul by Chris Johnson bails him out. And that's the second personal foul on Chris Johnson of Elkins. 5.20 to go in the first half. Smith to throw it in, baseline, and gets it into Briscoe, right corner, who moves around the perimeter. Jacoby Harris following him. Knights on top, 17 to 11. There goes Briscoe, drives to the left elbow, throws to Douglas, now Sir Roberts, top of the key, and throws it away. He was expecting Chris Smith to be stationary, and, and Smith had broken towards the hoop. Now Elkins not doing much dribbling, throwing the ball. There's one dribble by Fangle and he throws it away. Douglas picks it off and he goes in on Harris and his layup is good. Got to be careful, they're like a snake in the grass. Fangle to Harris and a long pass, almost too tall for Ryan Jones. Great catch and now Harris has it in the forecourt. Douglas on him, Shane Bell providing a pick. There goes Harris. Right to the hoop he goes, puts it up strong, rattles out, no good, Sir Roberts. Rebounds for Heights. It's 17-13, here come the Bulldogs trying to cut the lead to two, maybe even one. Roberts fakes a three, drives in on Fanuel, running one-hander. It's a crier, but it falls in. And we've got a two-point game, 17-15. Fanuel hesitates, throws the ball to Shane Bell, one dribble, Coy Glover ahead into the forecourt. Now he waits for his teammates to catch up. Fanuel gets it to Jacoby Harris who very narrowly avoided an over and back call. Shane Bell guarded by Roberts, quick into Ryan Jones and right to the hoop to score. Great vision there. Less than four minutes to go in the half and it's 19 to 15, Elkins over Heights. Winner of this one will play either Summer Creek or Shadow Creek, those two playing right now at the Merrill Center in Katy. Jaden Briscoe hands the ball to Chris Smith and they're going to get Jacoby Harris for a foul. And Harris and Fanuel are discussing strategy. Something about defensive assignments. Glover comes off the floor. So it is Harris, Johnson, Jones, Bell, and Fanuel on the floor for the Knights at the moment. And there's a discussion at the scorer's table. By the way, I don't think I mentioned that that was the first personal foul on Jacoby Harris, but it is. 3.38 to go in the half, 19-15. Elkins leading it, Heights with the basketball. Jaden Briscoe walking slowly across the midcourt stripe. Jacoby Harris with the defensive signal for his teammates. And Briscoe between the feet, dribble almost lost it. He's still top of the key. Drives to the left elbow, lays it off for Chris Smith. Sir Roberts fakes the three, drives inside the arc, almost stumbled, almost lost the ball, killed his dribble, getting it poked away. It's loose. He's seated on the floor, and it's a timeout taken by Heights. We'll take a timeout. It's 19 to 15. Knights on top of the Bulldogs. 312 to go in the half. Are you ready? Ready for anything. 
for what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. There are no words to describe it. The isolation. The boredom. The loneliness. If you're wondering where your teenage son or daughter's spirit went, you're hardly alone. The past year has been devastating, especially for them. But here's the good news. They might just find it again, playing high school sports. Workouts that stimulate, teammates and coaches that care, the sense of belonging so many of us have been missing lately. That's what school sports are all about. The sense of achievement is real, and the camaraderie is hard to beat. Coping with uncertainty is difficult, but school sports can help the teenagers in your family start feeling like themselves again. Encourage them to give it a try. High school sports, it's so much more than a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Boys Championships. UIL Basketball in San Antonio. It's coming up March 13th. For more details, visit UILTexas.org. That's in San Antonio's Alamo Dome. The Ridge Point Boys and the Elkins Boys both with a chance to get there. 19 to 15. Heights trailing and inbounding the ball. Jaden Briscoe has it. Top of the key. Between the rings, he's trying to make a move on Jacoby Harris and gives the ball up to Smith. Now Sir Roberts, top of the key, sends it over to Rhymes and leaves his feet and throws an interior pass that goes out of bounds. Head coach Ralph Barreras encouraging his team to be patient. Harris gets it to Bell. He dribbles twice, gets it across the midcourt stripe. Now to Chris Johnson. The Knights spread out the offensive alignment. Cross-court pass over on the far side, Josh Fanuel. Chris Smith on him, and it's a bounce pass to Shane Bell. Now to Chris Johnson, deep in the left corner, thinking about the three. Side-to-side -side dribble, now drives the baseline. Puts up a wild shot off the corner of the backboard, no good. Heights gets it back after grabbing the rebound. Jaden Briscoe across the midcourt stripe. Bulldogs trailing, 19-15. to Shane Bell is on Briscoe. Now it's Rhymes, and over in the left corner, Sir Robertson, a steal by Ryan Jones, two on one. There goes Jones to the hoop, and he lays it off the glass. No good, he blew the bunny. And now it's Sir Roberts, correction, Chris Smith, fouled in the open court by Shane Bell. Jackson Fields comes in for the Knights. He replaces Ryan Jones, who's kind of double blinking as if he got hit in the face on that fast break. Michael Rodriguez was in the game briefly for Heights. He's back on the bench. So now you have Briscoe, Williams, Douglas on the floor for Heights. A three-pointer from the top of the key by Briscoe. No good, rebound rhymes. He gets it over to Douglas, whose shot is no good. Jacoby Harris grabs the rebound, holds on tight. Gives the ball to Johnson, who gives it right back to him so he can start dribbling. And a timeout is taken by the Elkins Knights. Actually, it's an official timeout, I do believe. Well, either way, we're going to take a timeout. 1.25 to go in the first half. 19-15, to 15, Elkins on top of Heights. First Tire Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. 
free alignment with the purchase of four tires, or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bite Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. It's Douglas, Rhymes, Smith, Williams, and Briscoe on the floor for Heights. Now Faneuil with his back to the basket, almost lost it, double team. Now he does get it taken away by Douglas. And Heights on the run, trailing 19 to 15. Briscoe into the forecourt, shadowed by Bell. Gives the ball to Douglas, and now in the left block, it is Williams backing in on Jackson Fields. Can't get the shot off, but he dishes to his teammate. That's Colby Williams, and that's two for the 6'7 senior forward. Now, Jackson Fields, his height is handy in the backcourt against that press. He gets the ball and then passes over to Jacoby Harris. It's 1917, Knights on top. 42 seconds to go in the first half. Shane Bell launches a three. It's good. Shane Bell with the three ball makes it 22 to 17. Jacoby Harris picks up Briscoe in the backcourt, but not being very aggressive. 25 seconds to go in the half. Briscoe looks like he's gonna bleed some clock. Harris watching him like a hawk. Gets an instruction from one of the assistant coaches. Now the clock is down to 12. Briscoe still hasn't made a move. The clock is at six. He better do something. There he goes down the left sideline. Gets the ball to Douglas, meets a double team. Can't do anything with it. Launches it from 35 and he almost hit it. It was off the back iron and no good. And Coach Barreras is very upset with his team for not getting a better shot there. They had plenty of time to do it. 22 to 17 is our final, final, is our halftime score. And we'll be back, talk about what else has happened in the area today. The girls, of course, are one week ahead of the boys. We'll bring you up to date on VibeFortBend.com when we return. GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the african-american film critics association it's a place where you can go to learn to laugh to educate and uplift to launch your new experience just say black experience into your xfinity voice remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in black entertainment anytime the black experience channel is the new place to experience our stories only on xfinity restrictions apply not available in all areas requires xfinity tv with x1 You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. 
All of us love sports, but not all sports are created equal. College sports have big budgets, dedicated alumni networks, and corporate sponsorships. Professional sports have even deeper pockets, millionaire owners, lucrative TV and radio deals, and merchandise sales. High school sports have you. Everyone agrees high school sports give us plenty of reasons to cheer. And now's a great time for us to give back. Supporting your hometown high school won't cost you much, but it will go a long way to ensuring the games we love the most are here to stay. Texas High School Sports. They're good for our kids, good for our community, and best of all, they're good for you. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Halftime at Hobson Fieldhouse with the Elkins Knights leading 22 to 17 over the visiting Houston Heights Bulldogs in quarter number one. Elkins, after falling behind at first, closed the quarter with an 11 to two run and led 13 to seven, but in quarter number two, Heights outscored Elkins 10 to nine. So that's how we sit at the 22 to 17 score. The winner of this game is going to meet either Summer Creek or Shadow Creek. And the Bulldogs and the Sharks are playing over at the Merrill Center in Katy right now and hoping to get an update on that game very shortly. So you got Summer Creek and Shadow Creek to meet the winner. Uh, the winner of, of their game is going to meet the winner of the one that you are listening to right now. So what else is going on? Well, in another half of the bracket, in one of the Region 3 6A semifinals, Atascacita, ranked number 12 in the state and the favored team against Dawson, but not favored by a lot. Atascacita gets the victory, 55 to 54. And they have this information from Todd Freed, host of H-Town High School Sports, brought to you by, by Vipe every week on AT&T Sportsnet. And Todd says that Dawson trailed the whole game, but then the Eagles rallied so they had a chance to win the game at the end over at Tascacita, and they inbounded at half court with six seconds to go and a chance to win, but a Dawson player was dribbling towards the goal and he just simply tripped, lost the ball out of bounds, and Dawson did not get a shot off. So an unfulfilling way to end a game where they made a remarkable comeback to have a chance at the end. So. The team that, uh, <coughs> well, Atascacita, the one that survived their very close game with Dawson, is going to play either the Ridge Point boys or the Clear Creek, uh, Cy Creek boys. So that will be the second half of our doubleheader. We will start at five o'clock, or Lord willing, we will start at five o'clock, put it that way, because I have to somehow make my way from Hobson Fieldhouse in Missouri City to the Merrill Center in Katy in time to get the start of that game between uh, Side Creek and your Ridge Point Panthers. So, well, what else is going on? I can tell you this. In the Class 5A, 3A boys bracket, or I should say the Class 5A Region 3 boys bracket, the Katy Pato Panthers, were victorious 42 to 39 over Kingwood Park last night. But there are some games going on either right now or later on this afternoon where we don't have scores and we're gonna be following them for them, for you. The Crosby Cougars and the Goose Creek Memorial Patriots. And also the Manville Mavericks against Beaumont United. The Timberwolves are just, you know, other than Duncanville, I can't really think of a team or a school in the state where the girls teams and boys teams are as tough as they are over at Beaumont United. So let's look at the girls scores. Well, we've got Tompkins taking on Shadow Creek. That is tonight at seven o'clock. But last night over at the Merrill Center, Cy Creek beat Summer Creek 70 to 41. Very impressive indeed for the undefeated and top ranked Cy Creek Cougar girls. So let's also look at 5A. College Station beat Foster 
55 to 45. We had that game for you, and that's uh, that was over at the Merrill Center. I was able to see the Cy Creek game, most of it, and they were very impressive. College Station was pretty impressive too. They are feeling like they can beat the world because they beat undefeated Kingwood Park before they ran into Foster, and College Station was huge in the third quarter as their girls got a 19 to eight advantage. So they went from being down substantially at halftime to going up eight early in the fourth. And Foster got within three in the late going with about four minutes to go. They were within three, but that was kind of like trying to push something up a hill and they came just short of getting it to the summit. And it just rolled back down. So that means that College Station is going to face either Pflugerville Hendrickson or Beaumont United. You know, in Pflugerville, their football field is called the the field, and it's spelled P-F-I-E-L-D, kind of like Pflugerville is spelled. And I guess you're really an old-timer if you remember when Pflugerville was not only a one-school ISD, they, they were also a Class 2A, which at the time was basically 1A and they called six man, six man. You know, back when we called things what they really are. VipeFortBend.com presentation of UIL basketball playoffs is brought to you today by Xfinity with the X1 Sports app. Get up to the minute score, stats and standings right on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive. Make sure your vehicles are in shape for the winter First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. All four of them are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. We'll be right back. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. Elkins gets the first possession of this third quarter, leading 22 to 17, and the Knights will be going from right to left, shooting at the basket that is nearer to their team's bench. And they inbound it into the backcourt to Josh Faneuil. Left-handed dribble, moves across on Rhymes, throws the ball to Ryan Jones, and now it is Chris Johnson with the ball over his head. Jacoby Harris spins in the free throw circle and turns around and hits it off the glass from about 12 feet away. That makes it 24 to 17, and that is the biggest lead for the Elkins Knights. Harris following Briscoe, who moves near the left sideline, gets the ball to Rhymes in the corner. Sir Roberts fakes a three. Drives into the paint, puts it up, rattles it around, no good. Ryan Jones grabs the rebound for the Knights. Here comes Harris pushing it. Doesn't meet any resistance till he gets to the foul line. And now he kicks it back out to Chris Johnson, drives the baseline, pulls up, shoots an 18-footer. No good. Shane Bell taps it in. Went between two Bulldogs and got the putback. There's a timeout on the floor right now. I'm not really sure what this is about. But the Knights are going to go over and talk to Coach Albert Thomas. And the Bulldogs go over and they will talk to Coach Ralph Barreras. And he is beside himself. He didn't, he doesn't see what he wanted to see from his Bulldogs coming out in this third quarter. He is really animated. So 26 to 17 is our score. The Knights enjoying their biggest lead. The official, one of the three officials has very emphatically said that this was an official timeout. You know, where he tops, uh, taps his fingertips on each shoulder. So I'm not really sure what the issue is or was. But it's going to be Heights. With the basketball trailing 26-17, here we go. We are just short of one minute into the third quarter, and Briscoe moves in on Harris. Gives the ball up at the left elbow. Rhymes almost threw a pass, picked off. There goes Dulles to the... Uh, Douglas to the left block. He is fouled on the floor. And Jacoby Harris with open mouth. He looks like Mr. Bill from those old claymation things on Saturday Night Live from, you know, almost 40 years ago. His, his mouth was open in a perfect, oh, he thought it was traveling. But it was a foul that does not result in shots. Chris Smith gives the ball to Rhymes. 
Now Briscoe, top of the key, drives in on Jones, loses the ball, but it was knocked out of his hands by one of the Knights. And it'll be Rhymes to throw it in along the baseline on the offensive right. Fakes one pass, gets it to Douglas. Johnson right in front of him. Can't pull the trigger, moves to the right elbow. Kicks it back out to Rhymes, now back to Douglas. Pulls up at the right elbow, one-hander, no good. Faneuil grabs the rebound, took it away from his teammate, Ryan Jones. Chris Johnson has it, stutter step move, hesitation. Backdoor layup is no good, and the rebound comes down to Briscoe for Heights. He quickly pushes it ahead to Rhymes. Rhymes going all the way to the hoop, tries backdoor, it was on open. He blew the bunny, and there is Harris throwing it downfield, down the court to Faneuil. He is knocked down and tumbles into the goal standard, the basketball goal standard, that is. And the foul called on Chris Smith. Foul number two on Smith. And Gabriel Alvarez is coming into the game. First chance he gets, he will. Fanuel. Hit the first free throw. Chris Smith and, and Briscoe come out. Briscoe is the one getting the tongue lashing from Coach Barreras as he comes off. And you have Colby Williams and the aforementioned Gabriel Alvarez into the game. Faneuil with one more foul shot. It's no good. He hit the first one. That made it 27-17. And the rebound to Colby Williams of Heights. Douglas now has it. Right wing now moves to the top of the key, gives up the ball, now gets it back. Gives it to Sir Roberts, drives in right block, and finger rolls it off the glass and good to make it 27-19. Now the Knights not doing much dribbling as they move the ball into the forecourt. Shane Bell going to go to the rack, gives it to Ryan Jones. Oh, a beautiful layoff, drawing the defense. And somehow finding, finding his teammate Ryan Jones in the forest, basically. Rhymes quickly into Sir Roberts. Had position on Faneuil and an easy layup to get it back to an 18-point game. Or I'm sorry, an eight-point game. 29-21. Faneuil in the middle of the court. Gets it to Bell. Quickly ahead, Ryan Jones. Goes up strong. He hits it. Colby Williams got him with the body, but the foul not called. Still, it's a 10-point lead for the Knights. 31-21. The Knights crowd getting really fired up. Douglas, long cross-court pass to Rhymes. Holds the ball above his head. Now Sir Roberts has it. Douglas trying to get Roberts to move between the rings, and he does. Roberts gives up the ball. Rhymes, now Alvarez has it along the perimeter. Sir Roberts deep in the corner looking for Rhymes. Inside the three-point arc, cross-court pass Alvarez. Entry pass to Colby Williams, makes a move. He's going through a double team, puts one up short, and a foul called. Knights fans don't like the call but because it was a little bit late. And it's against Ryan Jones. Second personal on Ryan. Williams, first free throw, no good. Colby's a 6'7 senior forward. Ryan Jones comes out of the ball game. Jackson Fields replaces him. Williams taking his time, second free throw, swish. It's 31 to 22, the Knights on top. Faneuil to throw it in. Gets it to Harris in the corner, now Fields, now ahead to Johnson. It's two on one, there goes Johnson all the way to the hoop, and he draws a blocking foul as he goes up high. And frustration on the part of Colby Williams of Heights. Looking back to our traumatic Tuesday evening here at Hobson. The Bush Broncos were seemingly in control of their game against Heights, but Heights really ratcheted up the pressure late in the third quarter and early in the fourth to grab the lead. So the Knights, a veteran team who I think can handle it, just needs to be aware of that. They will come at you and they will come at you hard. Johnson's first free throw was no good. He's waiting for the second opportunity. Johnson with several dribbles. Now it's in the air. Good. 
32 to 22 our score. Douglas walks across midcourt. The Knights have not been pressing too much here in the second half, not yet anyway. Sir Roberts on the left wing, gets the ball back to Rhymes between the rings. Now around the perimeter to go, right side Alvarez. Now it's Douglas moving back into the free throw circle. Harris following every step. Between the feet dribble, spin move, and stolen by Jackson Fields. Quickly ahead, Chris Johnson almost running out of room and bounce pass along the baseline. That was unfortunate. The pass was just simply leading him too far and made a dive for it and tried to get it to Faneuil. He was trailing by about half a step. Didn't work out, missed opportunity, but the Knights still lead it 32 to 22 and we are halfway through the third quarter right now. Jaden Briscoe back on the floor. Jacoby Harris following him very slowly. Now far sideline. It's Rhymes. He gives it off to Sir Roberts and he scores to make it 32-24. Harris dribbling through the traffic. Now it's Faneuil right down the middle. Over to Chris Johnson in the right corner. Fakes the three steps back. Launches it off the back iron. Rebound Faneuil. Goes up strong off the glass. No good. Tap. No good. Ball goes out of bounds and it still belongs to Elkins. Substitution, Coy Glover is going to come in for the Knights. Chris Johnson gives a high five to Coy, but looks a little bit frustrated, tapping himself on the chest. Now the Knights inbound the ball, less than three and a half minutes to go in the third. Shane Bell, three from the left side, no good. Rebound, it's Alvarez for Heights. Gives it to Smith. And I think Fanuel... Fouled him in the backcourt. Yes, he did. That was kind of a silly foul by Josh, but the good news is it's only his first. Briscoe walking it up. Harris meets him at midcourt. Now Sir Roberts on the left wing, trying to drive in on field. Stops and shoots a two from the free throw line, and they call Fields for the foul. I don't know what he did. Maybe he breathed on him. Seemed a little questionable. Sir Roberts will be at the free throw line. 3.04 to go in the third. Roberts and the Heights Bulldogs trailing 32 to 24. Make that 32 to 25 as he hits free throw number one. And the second one by Sir Roberts is good. He pulls Heights within 32 to 26. Fangle to throw it in. There is Harris to Bell. Now Glover dribbles into the forecourt. Two on one, there goes Glover. Went hard to the hoop with the ball swatted out of his hands. Beyond the baseline. Bounced off the knee of one of the Elkins cheerleaders at the north end. We're under three minutes to go in the third. Glover comes off the floor. And Chris Johnson back in after a very short rest. Jacoby Harris trying to find Fanuel, but off of Alvarez's hands. And now they say Fanuel touched it? I don't think he did. He can't believe the call. He's saying it was off of Alvarez's fingertips, and now the officials change the call. And they make the right one. The Elkins Knights will get it. Nobody but Alvarez touched that inbounds pass by Jacoby Harris, who now throws another one. Chris Johnson has it near center court. Now it's Harris between the rings, moving his teammates around. Alvarez guarding him, drives to the right block, kicks it back out to Faneuil. And it's an offensive foul. They call it on Jacoby Harris. So on the floor right now for Heights. Alvarez, Roberts, Rhymes, Briscoe, and Smith on the floor for the Knights. It's Harris, Fanuel, Fields, Johnson, and Bell. Our score 32 to 26. All right. 
Briscoe has the ball and now he is walking it up the floor. Comes across midcourt. Harris picks him up. He tried to ISO him. Alvarez launches a three. Just like his sister, he drills it. That makes it 32 to 29. Look out for the pressure. The Knights break it. Johnson to Faneuil. Right corner three on the way. Way long and no good. Rhymes almost lost it. Bell harassing him. But here comes Briscoe up the floor far sideline. Gives it to Smith. Top of the key. Rhymes sends it to Alvarez in the right corner. Now gives it back to Briscoe. Guarded by Harris. Side to side dribble. Tries to get inside the free throw circle. Can't do it. Now he backs up. Sir Roberts guarded by Fields, and there is Harris with a steal. Took it away from Chris Smith, and it's a travel on Harris. Oh, no. Harris doesn't like the call. Rhymes comes back down the floor to inbound the ball. Fields leaves the court for the Knights. He's replaced by Ryan Jones, who guards Rhymes. Quick catch and shoot by Alvarez. It's no good, but Rhymes gets the rebound. Goes up strong back door and scores. It's a one-point game, 32-31. Ryan Jones gets it in. Now Faneuil near sideline going all the way to the hoop. Puts it up. And it's good! He outmuscled Sir Roberts and scores to make it 34-31. Oh, we got a good ball game going on in here, folks. 1.34 to go in the third quarter. And it's just our first game of the day. We will have Ridgepoint taking on Side Creek later. Jaden Briscoe almost lost it. Dribbling in, left block. Kills his dribble, gives it back to Alvarez. Gets it taken away by Harris. Harris looking up at the floor, but now he's going to have to dribble. Gets it to Faneuil. Faneuil driving in, off the glass, and good! 36-31. The Knights were down 32-31, but they have scored the last four points. And we've got one minute to go in the third. This fan, this crowd really getting into it. Briscoe guarded by Harris near midcourt. Heights likes to bleed off all the time and then shoot with single digits on the clock. And Briscoe just standing with the ball against his hip. 40 seconds to go. He's standing in the midcourt circle. Jacoby Harris is eight feet away from him. Now Jacoby backs up. Nothing happening right now except the fans making a lot of noise. The clock is at 28 seconds. Briscoe just massaging the basketball. I wonder if he dribbled. If he dribbled again, would it be double dribbled? That was so long ago, I can't remember if he dribbled. 13 seconds. Now here he goes. Inside 10 seconds, drives to the top of the key. Left block, puts it up hard, rattles around, no good. Rebound, Harris to Johnson. Got to get it off, get it in the air. It's in the hoop, but does it count? It's in the hoop, but does it count? Evidently, it does. The officials are talking. They look at the scorer's table, and the two points will count. What a great way for the Knights to finish quarter number three. They lead it 38 to 31. We'll be back on VitefortBend.com. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. Looking for the perfect combination of flavor and heat to spice up your lunch? Look no further than Whataburger's new spicy chicken sandwich, available for a limited time. Heights gets the ball to start this fourth quarter. They trail 38 to 31. Region 3-6A semifinal game. 
Douglas has the ball, guarded by Johnson on the left wing, almost lost it, had to backtrack. Briscoe, three-pointer from the left corner, no good. Rebound, Sir Roberts, the putback is good. 38-33, full court press by Heights. Fanuel gets it to Bell, now to Johnson, into the forecourt. Johnson is assaulted from behind, and a foul will be called on Chris Smith. Five team fouls on the Elkins Knights in half number two, only three on Heights. Jacoby Harris to throw it in for the Knights. Gets it to Ryan Jones, now Faneuil. They work the perimeter. Shane Bell sends it over to the right side to Chris Johnson. Harris into Faneuil between two defenders, puts it up. A 12-footer good along the baseline, right side. Makes it 40-33. to Jaden Briscoe wanting a teammate to join him or provide a pick but nobody's coming in his direction. Now it's Ryan, sends it into the left corner, and Sir Roberts, a three in and out, no good. Ryan Jones grabs the rebound for the Knights. Under seven minutes to go, and it's 40 to 33, Elkins on top. Jacoby Harris with hand signals for his teammates as he dribbles across the midcourt stripe. Now Shane Bell has it far sideline. Ryan Jones between the rings. Chris Johnson on the left wing. Into Bell, turns around, nobody there, so he goes to the hoop, and he scores off the glass from the left side. Timeout Heights. 42 to 33, we'll be back on VikeFortBend.com, 6.32 remaining. First Iron Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com you are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. We thank the team at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for their sweet assists all year long, helping us take care of business every day as we bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. 42 to 33, the Knights on top. They close the third quarter with a six nothing run and they have outscored Heights four to two to begin this quarter. Now it is Douglas who hands the ball to Briscoe on the right wing, now he moves to the left wing. Pulls up at the left elbow, and Roberts trying to drive the baseline. He was fouled by somebody. And they call it on Ryan Jones. Ryan has four fouls. And Jackson Fields quickly up off the bench to replace him, but not right away. Sir Roberts rattles home the first free throw to make it 42 to 34. Roberts with free throw number two, good. 42 to 35, Knights by seven, Shane Bell near sideline, cross court pass to Jacoby Harris and he traveled. He put two hands on the basketball and took a step. I, I don't know that he took enough steps to actually fit the rule book definition of traveling. I mean, it, it was less than perfectly clean but I just don't know that he traveled. Heights with the ball down by seven. Briscoe with Harris right in front of him. Gets a pick from Colby Williams who's into the game. Now Sir Roberts top of the key. Cannot get around Bell. Kicks it back out to Douglas between the feet dribble. Makes a move on Johnson toward the baseline. Almost lost it. Now it's taken away by Chris Johnson. He's pushing it right up the middle of the floor. 
Now into the forecourt, now Harris, now Faneuil, now Jackson Fields drives the right baseline, and he lost it, but Johnson got it. Fade away jumper, no good from 10 feet away. Jackson the follow, comes up short, no good. Rebound, comes down to Rhymes, and Heights has it. Trailing by seven, 42 to 35. There goes Briscoe. Pulled up outside the three-point arc. Now the ball loose on the floor. Picked up by Williams. Now there goes a turnover. It's Douglas who lost the ball. He was kind of hoping that one of the officials would say it was knocked out of his hands, but Douglas let it slip away beyond the baseline. 5.13 to go in this final period. 42 to 35, the Knights on top. Shane Bell streaking to the hoop, and he puts it in! That is a rush to the rack, and that is excellence in basketball. Five minutes to go, and it's 44 to 35. The Knights, one point short of their biggest lead, which was 10 points earlier in this half. There goes Briscoe, now giving it off to Douglas with a hesitation move in the paint, and he's all alone for a short jumper. That's good to make it 44 to 37. Jackson Fields helping get it across the timeline to Shane Bell. Stops inside the paint, now backs out of there and gives it to Harris. Harris massages the ball, gives it back to Bell. Sir Roberts right across from him. Now here comes Douglas to guard Harris. Harris drives right side of the paint, now to Fields, and now a three by Johnson. No good, rebound, Bell saves it to Harris. And the Knights get a renewed possession and a timeout taken by the Knights before they put up another shot. 4.17 to go. 44-37, Elkins on top. We'll take a break and be back. This is VikeFortBend.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Since the Knights made a couple of mistakes against the Bulldogs press and fell behind 30 to 2 to 31, they closed the third quarter with a 6-0 run and, and since that moment when they lost the lead, they have outscored Heights 12 to 6. And the Knights have the ball leading 44 to 37 and they will inbound the ball in the offensive end. The winner of this game to meet Summer Creek or Shadow Creek. And at the end of three quarters over at the Merrill Center in Katy, Summer Creek is leading 50 to 42. And the Knights inbound it into the backcourt. Bell threw it to Harris. He's picked up by Douglas in the backcourt. Now gets it across the timeline. Now drives up to the left wing and pulls up from the left elbow off the side of the rim, no good. Faneuil hustles in to get the rebound. Gives the ball to Bell. Inside, Chris Johnson puts up a layup and almost drops. It's no good. He did draw the foul, and he will get two shots. The foul called on Jaden Briscoe. That's his fourth. Briscoe with four for Heights. And for Elkins, Ryan Jones has four fouls. Four minutes exactly to go in the quarter, and Chris Johnson, the sophomore, the future of the Knights at the line hits the first one. Sir Roberts re-enters the game. Colby Williams comes out, did a great job giving Sir a breather. All the Knights move away from the free throw lane. They're going to concentrate on defense. Johnson taking his time. Second free throw also good. The lead is 46 to 37. Jaden Briscoe across the timeline, side to side dribble. Now gives it to Douglas, who has to back away from the free throw circle. Now Sir Roberts has it. Trying to move Douglas around, gets the ball to him on the left wing. Harris right there in front of him. Chris Smith now has it. Faneuil is guarding him. And there goes Rhymes into the paint and a fade away off the glass. Amazing, about 10 feet away and falling back off the glass. And now the Knights get it quickly into the forecourt. Shane Bell bounce pass, and the ball gets away. Faneuil saves it. Chris Johnson trying to get loose. It's taken away by Briscoe. Here come the Bulldogs. 
And there is Sir Roberts off the glass. No good. Rebound, Faneuil. That was very important that the Knights limit them to a one and done. No pressure in the backcourt right now. Jacoby Harris walking it up. Three minutes exactly to go in the game. Shane Bell now has it. Far sideline. Returns the ball to Harris. Harris goes around Douglas. And a finger roll with the left hand. And it's an offensive foul. Oh, my goodness. Jacoby has been doing quite a bit of pleading here this afternoon on violations and fouls and non-fouls. The Knights still up 46 to 39 and we've got 252 left. Jaden Briscoe across the midcourt line. Harris picks him up. Now Douglas has it, Chris Smith launches from the top of the key, way short, Briscoe the rebound and he lays it in. A fingertip above Shane Bell. Now Fields to Harris, Fanuel, spin move near the baseline, and it's good! Sir Roberts fouled him. Sir is saying I went straight up. He leaned into me. But the officials say it is a foul on Sir Roberts. He's raising his hand not to say I committed the foul, but to say that I went straight up and that Faneuil initiated the contact. But, wow, these quick, strong athletes moving so fast, it's, it's tough to make the right call. I think maybe in that case that the official did. Faneuil hits the free throw to complete the three-point play. And the scoreboard says 49 to 41. Chris Smith, now to Rhymes. Douglas, left elbow, drives closer, puts it up. He draws a foul as he goes to the hoop. Hmm. Douglas at the line for Heights. The Bulldogs trailing 49 to 41. 216 to go. His first free throw. Rattles away, no good. He walks out of the circle, gets encouragement from his teammates, especially Rhymes. Knights fans rattling the hard plastic seats here in Hobson Fieldhouse. Second free throw in the air. It's no good, rebound, Faneuil, but he lost it out of bounds. one of those that bounced a couple times more than he expected on the rim and then when he grabbed it it just didn't come down when he thought it would so Heights with another chance trailing by eight and there is Briscoe back to Douglas he's at three-point range not gonna pull the trigger Harris is on him and he gets it inside to Smith and a little teardrop runner that's good to make it 49 43 Fandle in the middle of the court Gets it across the timeline. There goes Chris Johnson baseline. Little floater, no good. Ryan Jones, the rebound, and a putback. That makes it 51-43, and we've got 142 to go. The Knights leading by eight, trying to hang on. There goes Briscoe, and he leaves it behind for Douglas. Douglas guarded by Johnson, and he lost it near the free throw line, picked up by Harris. He turns around, looks for help. And the Bulldogs not pressing. Now Faneuil has it in the forecourt. Johnson. Coach Albert Thomas of Elkins wants a timeout. We'll take it with him. 51 to 43. This is VikeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. 
Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. One eighteen left. The Knights with the basketball. Shane Bell to throw it in. Near sideline. Just to the left of the scorer's table. He wanted the ball sooner because he felt like Heights was out of position. Harris in the backcourt is fouled by Douglas. Four seconds went off the clock, so one fourteen remaining. But Heights had a foul to give. So it'll just be Bell inbounding again near sideline, but in the backcourt, bounce pass to Harris. And there's another foul by Douglas, and that will put them over the limit. Free throws coming for Jacoby Harris. And I have a report from my good friend Rick Gaines over at the Merrill Center in Katy, the... Summer Creek Bulldogs leading Shadow Creek 54 to 42 with 6.11 to go. And now an update, 54 to 44, Summer Creek leads Shadow Creek with 4.47 to go. And the first free throw good by Harris makes it 52 to 43. 113 showing on the clock and Jacoby getting one more. Eyes it, flies it. Doesn't buy it though. Nine point lead, 52-43, and here comes Briscoe. Top of the key, moving in on Faneuil, back to Smith. Quick release, three off the back iron, no good. Rebound, Ryan Jones gets the ball to Harris. He's trapped. And is that a timeout by the Knights? No, it's a foul. They call a foul on Gabriel Alvarez, who just re-entered the game. We're inside a minute now, 59.2 left on the clock. And Jacoby Harris, who hit one out of two a moment ago, will try to make it happen here. Has a chance to give the Knights their biggest lead at 11 points. In the air, yes, nothing but net. 53 to 43. And the Knights, who play very good defense, can depend on good defense the rest of the way. They don't so much need points now. They just need to make sure Heights doesn't have a flurry of scoring. Second free throw, good. Didn't hit the net on either one of them. I'm sorry, didn't hit the rim on either one of them. Heights rolls it in. Here comes Briscoe across the timeline. And he launches a long three. It's off the glass. No good. Rebound. Sir Roberts kicks it back out to Smith. Drives inside. Two-pointer. Good. 54-45. to 45. Fanuel into Chris Johnson. Dribbling away from the pressure. Near sideline. And he's fouled by Rimes. And fouls. Fouling is something you have to do, but right now Coach Ralph Barreras was telling Rhymes that he had Johnson close enough to the sideline where instead of fouling him, he should have cut off his path, maybe initiated contact and possibly drawn an offensive foul. Chris hits the first free throw. The lead is back up to 10, 55-45. Thirty-nine and a half seconds left. Johnson deep knee bend and the second free throw misses everything. He airballed it. My goodness. Meanwhile, the Elkins cheerleaders, as is their routine, uh, very nervous because of the close nature of the game. That they just they just can't bring themselves to cheer. But now they should because that's a turnover by Heights. The ball went right through the hands of Kendrick Rhymes. That's a gift for the Knights. They didn't so much force that one. It just happened for them. So we got a 10-point game, 30 seconds to go. 
and Heights just backs off. They know the Knights have this, and Jacoby Harris is likely to dribble it out. Coming over, Chris Johnson giving him a, some kind of secret club handshake. 15 seconds to go. No defense being played. There are already handshakes. And that will do it. The Heights Bulldogs, what an amazing season. But that will do it. Fanuel now dribbles it out. The Knights are moving on to the Region 3 5A semifinal. I'm sorry. They used to be in 5A. <laughs> the Region 3 6A regional semifinals. We'll be back and wrap this one up real quick. Roger Smith with you on VibeFortBend.com. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Bats, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch a new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. The Elkins Knights took enough good care of the basketball, played good defense in the fourth quarter when they outscored the Heights Bulldogs 17 to 14, and they come away with the win 55 to 45. So this means that they were probably going to meet Summer Creek because Rick Gaines over at the Merrill Center and Katie says that Summer Creek is leading Shadow Creek by 10 with 4.47 to go. But of course, that can change. So that means that the Elkins Knights are in a Region 3-6A semifinal. And guess what? The Ridgepoint Panther boys could do the exact same thing in the other Region 3-6A semifinal. And so the possibility is still there for an all-Fort Bend ISD Region 3 final. That would be awesome. So the second half of our doubleheader is Ridgepoint taking on Side Creek. And we'll start that one for you as close to 5 five o'clock as we possibly can. We gotta make our way from the Hobson Fieldhouse to the Merrill Center. So for everyone who is a part of Vipe, thank you for listening to this one. It was exciting. Congratulations, Elkins Knights. You advance 55 to 45 the final they beat Heights. I'm Roger Smith. I will talk to you again sometime close to five o'clock. <laughs>